say an optimal population. Okay, next, next question, please. Uh, hi, I'm a third year student. Uh, I don't take this module, so forgive me if this question can come in a bit off. But I'm just wondering, why are we even bothering about this question? <laughs> why, why are we bothering about, is Singapore a model city per se? I was thinking that, I mean, I had some theories before I stepped in here that, I, that is things like, are we bothering about mo being model, the model city to care about because we want to be the best, like, as in casualism? Or are we more of a model city because of more of a, like, say, political progress or even things like, oh, more of an international image per se? So you're quarreling with the topic, is it? Itself, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you don't have a question, right? <laughs> no, that's my question. I mean, that's your question. I mean, why do you all think that we should care about being the model okay. city per se instead okay. of just like... No, no actually, if you, if you listen to the speakers, we're not asking is Singapore a model city, but looking at what are the best practices in the different areas no, of city governance. Uh, that means, yeah. let me rephrase it a bit then. then tell me what do you all think about this? Like, do you all really want to care about it or do you all just prefer a more like, oh, as long as everything is nice and steady in Singapore, that's it, the end. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll ask each member of the panel to make some concluding remarks. And could you please, in the course of doing so, um, respond to the five questions you've heard from the audience. We'll begin with you, Ian. Okay, uh, first of all, I. I really like to congratulate all the people who ask these questions. You guys are fabulous, you know, really good questions. And, and it's really amazing, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. I came, I came to, to uh, this part of the world about 20 years ago and, and nobody would stand up and ask a question the way you have done. And I think that that is, that is really a, a sign uh, of many things, and it, and it makes me very optimistic about what will happen in the future. So again, I, that's, I've used my, I'm going to use my time up just to thank you very much. Thank you, Yen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yen has been trying to get away from answering any questions. <laughs> but he's a very sleek guy, you know. Okay, uh, think Chai, please. Okay, I think the question about sprawling cities and culture, I think, I think they are not quite uh, uh, correlated in the sense that I think when we say sprawling cities are kind of not desirable, it's more from the environmental and resource point of view. Uh, uh, in fact, some of the most culturally vibrant cities are, are very dense cities, and you all have talked about New York and Paris and London and so on. Uh, and and I, I would totally agree with the speakers that, that culture is something that we ought to pay a lot of attention to. Uh, there's a bias in our planning over in the last several decades towards architecture, infrastructure, environment, necessarily so because we are in the developing stage. But I think increasingly, as I said earlier, uh, I think a lot of our agencies are looking very hard at the whole issue of culture and, and I think, you know, beginning to think about hiring sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, and so on to kind of have a bit more multidisciplinary mix uh, in the kind of people that we have uh, looking at the city. Thank you. Kun Yen, please. Okay. Uh, maybe I answer it by painting a picture, all right? We have this beautiful lady. And uh, the first thing about this person you need to make sure is that she has to live. So you've got to make sure that the internal organs, her arteries are unclogged, the blood is running, she eats well, she's generally healthy. I think that is what the government tries to do for the city. The infrastructure has to be put in, the plans have to be put in, the land has to be put in for future growth of the city to build housing. So these basic things have to run. It is a safe country, all right? and uh, it generally has good leadership, things move. So the first role of the government is really that, get those things going. So we talk about rural-urban migration. Very often the city is so congested, the basic things are not even there. No housing, no sewer, no water, no electricity. So I think first thing is about getting these going, all right? Then the beautiful lady dresses up. She can dress in classic chic, or she can be quite bohemian, depends on her taste. That's really the art and culture that comes in that makes the woman or the man. 
And really, it depends on all of us here. It doesn't depend on the government. We make the city. This is what I said about loving the city and the, love, the city loving you. The city loving you meaning giving you this environment for people to flourish. And I think that will form the, uh, the identity of the city, the soul of the city. It is all of us. It is not the government, right? So that's how I would respond to the two questions together. There's a role in both, and we all need to do it together, not one or the other. You can have all the wonderful culture and art, but if everyone is living in slums, you turn on a tap and you dare not even drink the water, I think there's a problem, right? So I think it's about working together. Just a quick uh, address on the uh, uh, population issue, which we didn't quite go into. Uh, I think a lot of people reacted negatively to it, but from a professional point of view, I think it's the responsible thing to do. Planners need to work towards some parameter to plan. You cannot say plan, but you have no idea what you're planning for. It doesn't mean that the population will get to that number, but you need to plan for it. What if it gets to that number, right? But then I think the final issue is whether it actually gets to that number really, again, depends on all of you. Because if there's a lot of resistance to growing the population, the, the uh, people's wishes would come way before the physical issues arise, all right? which you can see. Everything is slowing down now. If you go to the restaurant, you have to wait longer because there are not many people serving in the restaurant. We have to live with that if that is what we want. Everything is going to slow down. You are going to graduate in about two years or three years' time. The economy may be growing at a pace of 1%, 2%. Now, jobs will become an issue. Is that what you want? So I think these are all choices that we will have to make. All right? The government is responding. It's slowing down everything. Ask the architecture firms. Do you have enough draftsmen to do your work? I don't know. No, okay. Richard just told me no. So these are the consequences of the choice of the people, which we have to think about. I just leave it there. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I can you have the final word. Yes, so my, my question, um, and my answer is rather similar in that sense that I always uh, think of the city, the planning of a city, like uh, setting up a fiscal stage. Which is why I said all good cities are planned earlier on. If you want to have, uh, if imagine you, you have uh, a theater, you have a stage. You want a stage to be, to be even, you don't want to, to trip and fall. You design it for good lighting, you design it for good acoustics, you design for all these things. All these are planning. You plan the environment for a very good performance to be able to take place in it. You are all actors in this play. So it is how, it's what you make out using this stage to perform your lives. Um, and certainly you would, you would, not, you would not complain that the, the designer, the stage designer um, has made a good environment to you to perform in. But you may complain, a moment ago I hear that if it is too much of a rigid planning that I can't even move to, all the chairs are fixed. I can't even arrange, rearrange the chairs. I think, yes, that's a problem. But that's bad planning when you don't allow for flexibility. So a good city allows for flexibility, allows for improvisation, allows for all these different things that I hear from that the question in that, in that quarter there. Um, so for me, a good city allows, uh, sets up a framework for those things to happen. But the basics must be there creating a wonderful stage. And then the rest is for us to, to, uh, to perform in. And the thing is, in the Chinese says, actually life is very simple. Yi, you take care of yi, si, zu, xing, yu, and le. Finish. That's, that's a basic um, requirement. Dressing yourself, food, a house to live in, good transportation, good entertainment, and culture. That's it. You have all those uh, five, six, six elements. You basically answer to most needs of people. And 
how to put 